All right, we got uh, the Serpent's Pass here, and again, I'm actually really happy. I was talking about this uh, just the last vlog. I was saying I really hope they don't just leave it where Aang's like, Oh, Appa, oh, I go through pain in this one episode, and then, yeah, I'll get over it in the next. I like that it's still carrying over, and now we got a different stage of grief going on here. Uh, and uh, I really like that. I like that he's trying to be stronger and he's trying to sort of keep the emotion out and you can understand that he doesn't want it to hurt he thinks it'll make him a stronger leader and he's trying to be he's trying to be tougher so it's it it seemed very logical to go this route which i really enjoy but on top of that we get some other cool stuff going on we got this uh this cool thing that they have to cross over called the serpent's pass which is a bunch of rocks that go across uh the water here that i guess it kind of looks like a serpent, but that's not why it got its name. Anyway, it's more because uh, there actually is a giant serpent that attacks them. One of the few designs I didn't care for. I didn't think the the dragon snake, whatever that is, I, I didn't think it was all that interesting. Um, I I've seen better designs, but anyway. So you got uh, Sokka comes across the... Uh, I'm blank on her name. I'm sure I, I saw her on the... You know, her because... I mean, look at that picture. She's going to be coming back, I'm sure, so I'll, I'll get her name then. I just call her Warrior Girl for now. Um, but she comes back, and uh, which is good. It was obvious when he was asking about her, I think, in one of the other episodes. Like, oh, so how's she doing? And, oh, she's not here? Okay, so obviously they're building that up. And what I like, uh, kind of obvious, but still, I think, works, is that you have Aang going through his despair, in a sense, not wanting to give in to his emotions, not wanting to get attached because he's afraid uh, he'll really get hurt again. Iyasaka going through the same thing because he lost the princess character, and you really he doesn't want to quite give in to this character either because he's afraid of losing someone that'll get that close to him again. So again, it, it's a good um, good parallel there. Uh, and there's another parallel going on. I like that now Jet has entered back into this, who I did not. I didn't think it was one of the more interesting characters, and I will admit, it looks like Zuko and him are kind of teaming up, and Jet figures out who he is. Like, one of the few people who figures out who he is, <laughs> come on. Nobody can put together this kid and his chubby old uncle, and the kid has this giant flaming burn on <laughs> side of his face that this is the prince, but I don't know. But uh, Jet figures it out. Uh, they seem to form this friendship. I'm... If they want to stay consistent, I would think that Jet's probably going to betray him, because I remember that's what got him in trouble before, it was his hatred of the Fire Tribe and just never wanting to show any sympathy. So now he has, like, the Prince, and he's trying to befriend him, and it looks like Zuko is sort of giving in. I'm actually sort of hoping they go that route again, because just anything to crap on Zuko, it's it's so sick of me, but it's like, it just makes him so much more interesting. The more he can fight through that stuff, the more I'm like, yeah, go Zuko, fight through it, turn to the good side or whatever. So, um, I, I'm just a really demented bastard that way, I guess. Uh, so, or maybe they'll form a perfectly nice friendship, who knows. Uh, so you got them going on... Uh, this trip, you got these two parallels going on, and finally at the very end, Katara says it's okay to sort of give in to this, and how do they, how does he finally give in? He sees a baby being born. Okay, I, I, I'm not gonna say, like, seeing a baby being born isn't gonna, like, change everything. It's a totally legit thing, just... Oh, couldn't you think of something else? <laughs> it just seems like that's the most sort of generic thing you could go for. But I don't know. It, 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 I don't know. <laughs> Lots of people have their lives change when they see, you know, their child or just a child being born. So, I mean, that's, uh, that, that's perfectly cool. Um, and I like that he's come to a point in that he realizes it's... He can let the emotion in. He, he can accept that this is something he's going to fight for, and that's the exact balance he needs when he gets to the location he sees this giant drill that's being made. I'm not sure if it was going to attack or whatever, but he says pretty much at the end, Appa is going to have to wait. And I like that. I like that 
it's only when he let the emotions in that he could come to that very rational uh, conclusion. So I, I thought that was good. That was a good evolution there. That, that was a good journey. Uh, and I'm trying to think what else. It, it looks like the warrior girl is heading back now. I, I, I sort of thought, again, maybe that's another character joining or something, but I guess not. Maybe she'll pop up again. Um, again, I mean, just... It, I'm sure she'll pop up again. So, yeah, I'm trying to think what else to say about this episode. It's it's funny seeing Zuko get upset uh, about something as small as just wanting better food on the boat. Um, and him sort of thinking it's not fair. So there's sort of like just this mini little debate that's like, oh, we, we deserve better than this. We deserve, you know, what the people up there are getting. And it's it's such a tiny thing, but you can see that happening. You can see them saying this is worth going to the risk of getting caught and being thrown off the boat because we we deserve it. We're fighters. We, we deserve the same treatment, or if not better. So I, I like that. I thought that was actually a good... I, I do sort of like the connection him and Jet are making. Um, I do sort of hope Jet becomes a more interesting character, because, like I say, he, he didn't do much for me, but, I mean, it wasn't awful. Just, just didn't grab me that much. But, like I said, it's an interesting team-up. It'll be very fascinating where that goes. I, I <laughs> again, the sick part of me is just like, I hope he betrays him, but it's like, that's, how mean is that? Um, it just makes good drama. So we'll see where that goes. And especially as now that Zuko's opening up, like, oh, it might be good to trust somebody. It might be good to have people on my side. Man, wouldn't that be great if Jet just, like, totally backstabs him? And then Zuko's like, I knew it! I can't trust anyone! And the lightning strikes again, and the tear goes, and he's like, Father! I mean, it's just, I, I'm sorry, I love the big epic bullshit like that. I just love it. Um, or maybe they'll make a really, really good partnership, and they'll be, like, the most awesome, badass duo ever. Uh, like I said, the, the show is good enough that it's good at throwing, uh, surprises at you, so it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Um, yeah, I can't think of, uh, too much. Actually, I will say, the Cabbage Guy is starting to make me laugh a bit. Uh, cause I, I saw this Cabbage Guy, and they popped up a second time, I'm like... Okay, it didn't really make me laugh either time, but then everyone's talking like, the Cabbage Guy, the Cabbage Guy! I'm like, what is the... Well, I'm sure he'll show up again, but I mean, I'm, I'm still not getting the comedy. He is starting to get a little bit of a laugh on me. Um, <laughs> Andrew, just think about it, it's making me laugh a little bit. Um, it's just such a bizarre running joke. Why is this guy so obsessed with his cabbage? Focus! Focus! Sorry about that. Um, you know, just why is this guy so obsessed with his cabbages and why does... I don't know, why does he keep showing up in all these places? Is it even him? Maybe it's like his one... He has a bajillion twins or something, I don't know. Maybe he's a spy, wouldn't that be a great twist? Like, he was actually a spy following them the whole time, like the world's greatest spy. He's, di he's disguised as a cabbage salesman, so... I don't know, it's, it's growing on me. I, it used to not do much for me, but it, it's like the foamy mouth guy in reverse, where the foamy mouth guy was phenomenal that one time, and then the next time it's like, eh, sort of faded. Here's a joke that kind of, eh, didn't start off that hot. Now it's like, it's starting to get a little funny. That's, I think Garfield always said that's the definition of a running joke. Start off with a joke that's not the least bit funny, but actually gets funnier the more and more you do it. <laughs> so that, maybe that's the case here, but, uh, regardless, a uh, good episode. I'm curious to see what they're going to do with that big badass drill. So, um, yeah, that's about it. See you in the next one.